Hey, what's going on, Cowboys Nation? It's been a while since I dropped a little video, but it's another uh, edition of Random Thought. Some things, you know, I wanted to discuss on, some things I've seen. The first thing right now, as far as um, the corners that that you may see week one of ver uh, versus your uh, Super Bowl champion, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. <sighs> See, this is kind of tough because um, if you look at like Anthony Brown, now with his production over the last couple um, years since he's since he's been a cowboy, he hasn't really separated himself as far as um, uh, average and above average. He's pretty much average, you know, and with his, with his age and production experience awareness uh play recognition things of that nature how to be a pro uh some things you lose out on if you start calvin joseph at that position it's over anthony brown now with um the simple fact that calvin joseph goes um, against some of the best receivers in the league on a daily basis in practice a la uh coop lamb and gallup um, I think that would uh, fast forward or ignite his um, his production, um, his growth, and things of that nature just by dealing with those things in practice. And then he has someone like um, Quinn that has experience with some of the best corners that has played in the in the NFL in the last 15, 20 years. You know, when he has all these things working for him, I think it kind of pushes him into that role based on the simple fact. Um, I don't think we miss or lose out on production as much if we push uh, boss man fat into the starting lineup. Now, some things we might, like I said, some things we will miss out or some things we will um, lack as far as uh, maybe just being a over overall pro um, not losing your cool, you know, things happen. And um, with the with the NFL now, it's a lot more divas, a.k.a. Uh, people just talking trash, you know, and sometimes that can um, ignite or decline a player's enthusiasm and um, awareness. Now, like I was saying, as far as um, Tom Brady, um, is, do you think Tom Brady would treat Anthony Brown different than Calvin Joseph as far as um, attacking them, setting up um, them to get basically torched throughout the game. I don't think there's a big difference between Anthony Brown and uh, Bossman and Fat in the eyes of, in the eyes of Tom Brady. I feel like if he's going to torch, if he's going to attack Calvin Joseph because he's a rookie, he's going to attack. Anthony Brown because he's not that good. He's you know, it's it's the thing is that like if he was someone that we were comfortable with, we wouldn't even be talking about um uh, Anthony Wright outside or Calvin Joseph Cal, uh, Joseph in the slot in the, in the slot locking down slot receivers. We would just be saying, man, next year. You know, we're going, it's going to be fun to see who's going to start next year. But now we know Anthony Brown's on the team. We know that he's going to be starting. We don't have that type of uh, connection, that type of chemistry, that type of vibe when it comes down to Anthony Brown. So that's why I'm I'm skeptical thinking that he's going to be starting week, uh, week one, even though if he's not starting, then that means we're starting rookies week one against Tom Brady. And I feel like... This time, Brady, along with the the pressure that we could um, give them um, throughout the defensive line and um, linebackers, I think that would um, minimize the actual threat of oh, it's Tom Brady, you know, because it's not this ain't this ain't the Tom Brady that um, that we all remember as far as when we were younger in high school. Because now, man. The thing is that like life is going by real fast, you know, and it's good to see players like Tom Brady, LeBron, um, still not only still play in the league, but play at a good 
enough level to command respect from the peers and the fans, you know, but, uh, excuse me, but still, I still think, um, I still think, I still think we, we won't have to really fear Tom Brady as much and we shouldn't have to really, uh, contemplate starting boss man fat over Anthony Brown because of him being a rookie. That's just my opinion, man. So I think, I think, man, I think it's 50, 50 just, and I think it's up to training camp in preseason. And that's, and that's bad news for Anthony Brown. You know, if, if, if we're talking about a guy that's been doing this for five, six years and we're comparing him to a rookie and we're saying, Hey man, it's, it's, it's going to be up to camp to determine how good or bad um or not good or bad but determines who's going to start week well week 1 but I'm going to just go ahead and say I think it's going to be um I think it's going to be Calvin Joseph primarily primarily starting outside when they go maybe to nickel you might see him or Jordan, uh, Jordan Lewis swap between inside um playing time but I, I think, man, that it's going to be real tricky, and I st- and I think we're going to see a lot of corners play this year. I think, man, it's the only one that's a certified starter is Diggs. I don't see Diggs coming off the field, as far as just um, what he did last year, and then him having a real off season, a real preseason this year, things that he missed last year. I think that only excels and pushes his progression. To the next level but as far as the other corners man I think it's going to be a mystery but I do think I, th- I do think Anthony Brown um I think if it's anything I think he if he starts I think he's going to start in a nickel I don't think he's going to be our outside corner week one that's just my bold prediction so if you guys feel any different or if you agree, you know, go ahead and drop that down in the comments, man. We can go ahead and keep it pushing to the next topic, which is uh, Tristan Hill. Now, me, when it comes to Mr. Tristan Hill, um, I'm I'm on board. I know a lot of people are skeptical, saying, oh, I don't know if he's going to make the team. And he's on a tr- he's on a bubble. He's on the outside looking in and blah, blah. Listen. Shout out to Law Nation. Um, he just dropped a, a Tristan Hill video. I watched it, and it basically um, it basically made me feel more confident about the opinion I already had about Tristan Hill because I watched the games last year. I seen him disengage. I seen him make tackles in the backfield on a uh, running back. I see him. I seen him get pressure on the quarterback. All those things he did last year without the preseason that he that everyone missed. Um, and then without um, even though even though we didn't get get to see him do it throughout the whole year, he had a bad injury. I don't think that hurts him because I think how great he played during that time, he he made his plays now. Granted, I'm not going to say he's a pro bowler or nothing like that, but I do think he's definitely going to be on this team. I don't question it. Now, unless this 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 changes if he just goes out into preseason and declines on everything um, that he worked hard for or that he showed um, – that he showed, you know, progression and determination last year. If he shows, if he shows that he's regressed in, in any way, then this goes out the window. But if he just maintain maintains where he's at level of play and and, and just ignites a little bit, or however um, much he can grow during this off season, I think, man, you're you're going to see him on the field. I don't I don't think they're dropping him. He started last year. And he wasn't that bad as as far as, or I'm not going to say he wasn't that bad. He was better than not bad. He was good. And I think as far as the overall defense and how the defense played last year, he's a bright spot. He was a bright spot. So you can't really um, push him off the bridge, especially if you guys 
yeah, it's it's crazy how people just think that these rookies are just gonna come in and just be better than pros. Like we seen how Tristan Hill um, worked, and we seen the 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 difference in week one and week two, or not week one, but year one and year two. We seen how much work he had to put in, and how much um, it changed his game. So, do you guys really think that right now? Uh, Osa and Ghostin and uh, uh, Bohan, you think these guys are automatically better than Tristan Hill? Tristan Hill, uh, that was disengaging and, and and doing this thing against offensive linemen in the pros last year, not against D1 uh, competition, SEC, whether it's SEC or uh, Big Ten, whatever. You know, this Tristan Hill did this shit against NFL pros, starters. Not 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 like how um when we were when we were all um cheering for Donovan Wilson to get on the field when, when he showed plays in preseason and Gil, uh Gifford when they were dominating or making plays in preseason, we as a fan base were pushing for them to get on the field during the regular season. But when someone like Tristan Hill plays very well during last year's regular season for the first couple games because he got injured with Dak. You know what I mean? As far as um, the same game or whatever. But um, when you see a player that can play that well against competition that um, is in the same level or higher, you have, and it's like, man, we pushed him off the bridge just to, oh, let's get Olsen and let's just get this person. Tristan Hill's not going to make it. He has a tough, a tough way to go. Everyone does. You think Gallimore has an easier um, way to the team than Tristan Hill? Based off, of like, I mean, if you want to say that, it's, you may be, you may throw in uh, injuries. You know, Tristan Hill got hurt, so if you want to throw that in, then okay. But as far as his play style, do you think? Gallimore really outplayed Tristan Hill to where you're like, oh, Gallimore is definitely on a team and Tristan Hill, we don't know. Because this ain't Gallimore's... Gallimore didn't get drafted by Dan Quinn. You know? So, how do you really think that... I know, I, I just feel as though everybody has the same type as... Well, I'm not going to say everybody, but those two, Tristan Hill and Gallimore, I think they had the same uphill battle to climb but I do think both of, both of those guys make the team and you're going to see them week one probably starting so the next topic I want to uh, discuss alright so when you look at the um, the rookies overall who's going to have the most impact it's hard not to go with uh, Parsons only because the defense usually has one or two leaders slash quarterbacks of the defense, and it's usually like the safety or the middle linebacker. Two positions that we completely ignored for some time now. Um, as far as um, just putting in money, draft picks, free agency, things of that nature, drafting the wrong players, trying to plug them in, trying to see if that works, trying to see if they can fit in that role, and it doesn't work out, which is fine, you know. But now we have a legit middle linebacker. So as far as me, man, I think in a position where He's basically the only. That's that's kind of like that's kind of like Bohanna. Like when you look at Bohanna, he's like naturally the only one tech that we have. You know, so it's kind of hard not um, seeing him make the team. Like I said, unless he just doesn't play well in in the off season, a uh, training camp, preseason, things of that nature. But with Parsons, man, is it's hard not to really go with him when it says most impactful because I think I think we're going to see him uplift the pass defense and the run defense like when people don't I said this in another video I made when when we had like a top 15 top 10 defense that was I was naturally um, a run stopping 
defense. Like we did good against the run. But our pass defense has always been bad. Like if you really think about it, man, our and and as far as the scheme that when we when we was in the cover two, that cover two used to get torched where? In the middle of the field all the time. And that's usually where the linebackers were playing. And that could be based on the fact that the scheme cover two we were running, we didn't have the talent at the linebacker position to fulfill the needs of the cover two. Because in my opinion, man, I, I, I remember a lot of games, man, where the middle of the field just got attacked and we just seen um, healthy linebackers, man. It wasn't like we had uh, second string, third string. No, we had starters in there and we still couldn't stop the pass. Now, as far as this year, man, I think I think we transformed our linebacker unit. And it's going to be something that is going to push us, man, into one of the best defenses in the NFC. I'm not going to say I don't really base it off the NFL because it's conferences, man. We don't have to be the best in the NFL just to make it to the Super Bowl. All we got to do is dominate our division, which we should do. Make, make a couple plays against other teams. The NFC ain't really too scary, man. A lot of the powers in the AFC, and I think, I'm not saying the NFC is weak. It has some, it definitely has some strong teams, man. In any given Sunday, you know, you can take an L. But I think with just, with this connection and what we have right now, if these coaches can, you know, put these players in a position to succeed, I think you're going to have a good season, man, for these Cowboys. And, really get back to being prominent, man, because it's it's been a while since we really seen um like a successful season. And I think that's that's coming, man. So that's all I want to really talk about, man, on this version of random thought. Um I'm gonna start, you know, taking a little bit more time on these videos. Like I what I really do for real, man, I, I sit home, I drop the um the voices, the voiceover, and then I just try to hurry up and get it out to you guys. Um, I don't really pay attention or do too much as far as graphics and things of that nature. It's not like I don't take the time. I don't think it's important. I just, I'm just a busy, busy person. And I don't like, you know, I like moving. And I want to see, I want y'all to see the growth. So at some point, you want to start saying little different things, man, that, we're, that I'm working on because it's just me. It's not a team. You know, I don't have really... Um, other people that's really working with the with the uh, shows and everything or just the videos I'm doing, which is cool, man. I, I like I like it because this is how I started. I started doing this about two or three years, two or three years ago. I had like another uh, YouTube, another YouTube channel. I still have it, but it wasn't really based or it wasn't really like the foundation wasn't Cowboys. It was just because I do photography, you know, what I mean. Uh, videography and things of that so things of that nature so it was basically just everything I was doing at that time I was just creative and I was just pushing it all out for the world to see but this is basically um more cowboys man so go ahead and hold it down hit that like button subscribe man thank y'all for tuning in y'all have a good one stay cool peace